Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is January 11th and this is my weekly shop update. So I hope everyone is having a great week or has had a great week. Hope you're uh, getting ready for the weekend or whatever people that have weekends do with weekends. <laughs> I've been uh, in the shop working on the tool cabinet this week. So I was able to get out here and start getting the stock milled down to final dimension, get everything ripped to final size and get everything cross cut down to final length. So it leaves me with a bunch of boards and I'm ready to start doing the joinery. And I started working on the joinery for the back case. So this is essentially gonna be the back case, I guess, or whatever, the back box, the main body of the cabinet, that's a box. And then the two pairs of doors. So that's four more boxes. So I'm doing six, five. <laughs> Math is hard. Doing five boxes essentially. So the joinery that I've chosen to do on the case as well as the doors is a through dovetail with a miter on the front edge. So that's what that kind of looks like from the side. And then if you look at the front edge, there'd be a nice little miter there. So it just has a little bit of a cleaner look than seeing the grain run all the way through one piece or the other like you would on a through dovetail joint. So this one over here is completed. So you can see this is the back, so I didn't bother to do a miter there. So normally on a through dovetail joint, one piece gets stopped and the other one kind of laps over it. But with the miter, you get the look of a miter on the front. So it's just a little bit of a, just a little fancier, a little classier, I guess. But uh, anyway, this is the first one I did. That was my warm up piece right there. So it kind of gives you an idea of what the joint looks like. Is that continuous grain? How did that get like that? <laughs> so I just started uh, shooting that. Um, so I don't have it all done yet. I haven't looked at any of the footage yet, but next week I'll have a one of those, you know, sexy hand tool montage things for you guys to watch. And that'll take you through the whole process of cutting one of these joints, which is, uh, I don't know, it's not that bad. Through dovetails are a lot harder, in my opinion, than half blind dovetails, because with the half blind, you don't have to worry about one face and you can make the rest of the joint look like junk to make the good face look good. With the through dovetails, you don't have that option. It's got to look good from both faces uh, unless you're doing structural dovetails that they get covered up anyway. But if you're trying to do a visual perfect through dovetail, a lot more challenging to get that looking really good. So yeah, I think though that's really all I've got going on this week. Wow. <laughs> Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week is a log trailer by Matt. It's a 14 foot trailer with 7,000 pound axles and features a 12,000 pound Harbor Freight winch. Matt wanted his winch to be easily removable so he made a hook and catch mounting system. The parts in yellow are the additions and the trailer is now fully black. Next this week is a walnut table by David. All the wood for the project except for the tabletop was wood they had milled two years ago. He used a grain wrap technique to make the tabletop appear thicker than it really is. The beam for the table base and bench base are connected using the Festool domino connectors so they can be easily torn down and moved. The top is fastened down with rampa inserts and is finished with a conversion varnish. You can check out more of David's work over on Instagram or you can find him on his YouTube channel. Next this week is a ring box by Fred. Fred made this box for his wife for their 10 year wedding anniversary. It's made from a piece of red oak that he got from a pallet and it includes his first ever inlay made from some scrap purple heart he had from another project. Next this week is a pedal board by Alex. It's made from Tasmanian myrtle and holds all of his guitar accessories. The case comes apart using latches and the bottom side of the case remains on the floor as he plays guitar while the top side carries all of his leads and music books. Alex also has a video of the build over on his YouTube channel, and I'll leave you a link to that. So this week's Let Me Tell You About Something segment has to do with hearing protection. Uh, Isotunes recently sent me, at no cost to me, their Isotune Extras. So I have been wearing those and trying those out for the last few months now. I think it's been like two or three months now. And I thought I would share a little bit about the Isotunes, comparing them to what I used before, which were muffs. The, uh, these are the 3M, it's called the Work Tunes. Yeah, the Work Tunes. I have the, uh, the older one and like the newer one that I bought several years ago. So this one's got a radio in it and has a line in for hooking up to your, you know, whatever device. Uh, this one's got Bluetooth, so you don't have to worry about having a cord dangling around 
uh, connecting your head to whatever is connected to it playing music or what have you. So of course the biggest difference is this goes on your head, this goes in your ear holes. <laughs> and honestly, when uh, these started becoming popular, I was a little skeptical because I personally have never liked in-ear, in-canal hearing protection or headphones or anything. Like I've tried them a few times, I've always just absolutely hated the feeling of having things in my ears. So when I got these, I was a little apprehensive if I was actually going to like the concept of having something in my ears. But somehow these are actually way, way more comfortable than wearing the muffs. And another really great advantage is that they're less bulky, so I don't have anything sticking out the side of my head, which is a nice little bit of a improvement, I guess. So that kind of leads to long-term wear comfort. And the biggest thing is the fact that, like, if I'm wearing hearing protection, I'm probably wearing my safety glasses. So the issue with the muffs and the safety glasses is if you're wearing them, they're pressing right here into the side of your head, and it's not super comfortable. The way that I combat that over the years to make it more comfortable to wear over longer periods of time is to flip the glasses up so that the, uh, the muffs aren't pressing them into the side of my head. That works, it just kind of adds a little bit of a slight parallax effect to the glasses, which kind of makes things look a little weird sometimes until you get used to it. Of course, the nice thing here is that since these are just going into your ears, they don't have to you know, interfere with your safety glasses which is a nice plus. So just a few points of comparison. Uh, first, Bluetooth. The Bluetooth connectivity on the IsoTunes is a lot better than the connectivity on the WorkTunes. A lot of times with the WorkTunes, you would turn them on and they wouldn't pair right away and you'd be sitting there on your phone trying to figure out why this thing isn't pairing. It would say it's like not connected, but then it would say it was connected, but it's not connected. And you'd spend a lot of time trying to figure out why it wasn't connected. Eventually it would connect. It didn't happen all the time, but when it did, it was really, really frustrating and annoying. I'm like, I want to do things, but I also want to listen to music right now. Can this just work? <laughs> it seems like, so far, I haven't had any problems with the pairing on the Isotunes. You just turn them on, and they're pretty much instantly paired, and there's no issue with it forgetting that it's paired to your phone or anything like that. So that's a nice plus. Now, the comparison as far as range goes for the Bluetooth the range on the work tunes is a lot further, at least it seems that way to me, than the ISO tunes. With the ISO tunes, you really need to have your phone or device in your pocket with you as you're walking around. Even in this shop, which is 20 by 20, if I have my phone on one side of the shop, like if it was charging, and I walk to the other one, the reception gets a little spotty. Uh, maybe it's just the tools I have in my shop or whatever, but with the work tunes I could walk like halfway down the backyard with my pile of sawdust to go dump it before I start losing connectivity if my phone was sitting in the shop. So lastly, battery life. Uh, what I've noticed is the battery life on the work tunes is quite a lot longer than on the ISO tunes, but again the batteries on here aren't that big. Um, you do have to remember to actually like, plug these things in like every single time you leave the shop. I think they say the battery life is like six to eight hours, which is probably pretty accurate. But if you forget to plug them in after wearing them for four or five hours, they're gonna go dead and then you're gonna have to plug them in and not use anything or, not, or use something else because the batteries are built in. At least with this, obviously the batteries are bigger, it takes two double A's, but if they die, you just swap them out and you're back to work. So that's just something else to consider, I guess. As far as sound quality goes, the isotunes do sound a lot better than the muffs. I think it's because that's going directly into your ear holes and the, these aren't. But these are safety devices so like sound quality is kind of a secondary factor to me at least. The ISO tunes sound like any other earbud that I've used you know for your phone or, or whatever. So just some thoughts on hearing protection. I think I'm pretty much set to switching to in-ear hearing protection. Um, there's a lot of other in-ear products on the market you can check out as well. But if you've been using these a lot of time and you haven't tried something in ear and maybe you were apprehensive about them like I was, um, maybe give them a try. I'm really happy that I did. I don't really see going back to the earmuffs except for the times where I forget to plug these things in and they die. <laughs> so I think that's about all for me this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything, I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. I'll always be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.